How do I draw a house in pencils? What is my creative process? Follow along with me to see my six basic steps to take a piece of art from a blank piece of paper to this finished house portrait. And be sure to stick around to find out my all important tip to prevent smudging while working in pencils. Hi art lovers, I'm Sonia Peterson and welcome to Sonia's Art Room. I'm here to share how I started with a blank page and ended with this finished drawing. I've been drawing houses for a really long time, like more than 30 years. And over that time, my process has evolved into a really solid strategy, one that helps me have beautiful drawings every time. But first, if you wanna learn more about color, drawing and painting tips and art inspiration, be sure to hit the subscribe button. It means that you'll never miss a post and you'll get my future creative project ideas. I've learned a lot through trial and error and I'm excited to share my basic process with you in this video. Watch along as I share my six basic steps for a successful drawing every time. And be sure to stick around for my professional tip on how to avoid smudging when working with pencils. Step one, sketch lightly. I'm using a lot of measurements here. I'm using my straight edge, I'm trying to get my proportions correct on the house. Step two, I come in with a darker outline and then I trim my drawing paper. Step three is light color blocking. This is my very first layer. It is a light layer where I'm committing to the fact that my roof is brown, my siding is tan. It helps me to begin to build color as well. Step four, more color. This is my very favorite part of the drawing. It also is the longest part of the drawing. I'm gonna speed you through it here with my time lapse. Um, but I really want you to see how I build color on top of each other. It really is just key to a good color pencil drawing. So I'm working from left to right on the paper. You know, I am right-handed, but working left to right allows me to see my progress on the left and not cover it up with my hand. And also it helps me prevent smudging, which is a main theme when I'm working in color pencils. You'll see that I'm using a drawing triangle while I'm working. This clear straight edge helps me keep my edges crisp, which can be hard to do with a soft Prismacolor pencil. The triangle is also coincidentally a very good hand rest. Uh, my work is protected underneath the um, plastic triangle and it doesn't smudge. So I can use the triangle and the glassine paper to protect my art while I'm drawing. Here I'm building color on the roof. Coming in with my dark line, I'll be building the layers again here. This is a drafting pencil. Uh, the graphite lead inside of it is the same as a graphite pencil, but it allows me to have a crisper line and keep definition without overpowering the other colors. You'll see here that I'm using my pencil and my thumb to measure the distance of the roof to the windowsill. It's like a ruler, but not. It's just my pencil instead. Uh, I'm also using my triangle to make sure that my window edges are straight here. And, um, you know, windows are really the eyes to the soul of the house. And getting the windows correct is utterly important when it comes to a house portrait that you want to look realistic. I have a tendency to want to speed through windows because they can be kind of boring because they're really repetitive. There's a lot of detail. Um, but now more than ever is the time to slow down and get every line and shadow correct on those windows. Very important for a realistic looking house. I do love the brown trim on this particular house. It really just contrasts so wonderfully with the light window panes that I'm creating and that cream um, siding. These bay windows were very tricky for me. I actually had to erase them and redraw them a couple of times. Those little side windows just um, didn't want to cooperate this time, but I'm really happy with how they are now. And now that I've added this color, man, they really look good. 
I will be coming back to this, this whole area in my final step to add in, you know, the final shadows. Okay, big breath here. I'm finishing up this door and getting ready to work my way to the curved arch over the door. I have messed up more than one curved arch. I usually make one side perfectly curved and the other side too flat. So I really have to take these arches slow and be very purposeful to get that curve just right. So now I've worked my way over to the right side of the paper and I'm almost finished with the house. I'm a little bit preoccupied at this point because, you know, I'm just about finished with the house, but that's only half of the drawing. The yard and all of that stonework is another half. Um, so I'm trying to figure out in my mind how exactly I'm going to handle that. But I want to point out these bushes that I'm working on. Um, I have some two main rules for landscaping. I only use muted greens. I hardly ever use the color called grass green. It's just too bright and fake. And um, I always also use probably four or more colors when I'm doing a bush. Uh, I do usually a dark green, a light green, a red tone such as a peach, and then I'll bring in a dark such as a black or a charcoal. You may be wondering why I'm coloring in this yard before doing the fence. Um, the grass is going to be paler than the brick, and I like to do pale under dark. If I have finished the brick wall and then I bring, I drag that green up to the brick wall, I run a very high risk of smearing some of that burgundy into the grass and I just don't want to do that. So grass first, bricks on top of it. Here I have decided to tackle these brick steps first. They are actually like the darkest part of the brick and I don't want them darker than my wood trim. So I'm going to stick to a palette of burgundies and a little bit of um, Tuscan red, a little bit of orange, a little bit of tan, and of course black to help highlight the shadows in there. So this landing is getting ready to come up. That is primarily in the sun. So I'm doing that in cream and peach. Also the, um, the upside of the steps, those will also be peach to show the light shining on them. Here I am finishing up the landscaping on the right side of the house. Again, I'm dropping the grass in behind the brick wall first. So I have a lot of people ask me how to do bricks in a drawing and I have learned the hard way that the best way to do it is draw your grout first and then you want to come in with the bricks one at a time. Yes, drawing one brick at a time is quite tedious and it's a lot slower than it looks in this video right here. But when I'm working on such a detailed house, there's no other way to do it. This is the way to do bricks. You know, when this homeowner looks at their drawing, I want them to notice something new every single time they look at it. And really spending time on this kind of detail is where the magic comes. As I'm building these bricks, you know, I'm using um, two or three colors and then I'll come in with a fourth color. So that's what adds the, the variation and sort of the more lifelike look is everywhere you look, it's just a little bit different color. You don't want them completely uniform. They're not completely uniform in real life, right? So here I am again, drawing the individual brick and then I'll come down and draw the individual stone. I'll be building those colors. So first layer, this is sort of um, the grays and the henna and the clay rose. I love those different um, shades of the grays. I use those quite a lot in my house drawings. Yay, I am finishing up the details on this side of the house. Notice I'm keeping my hand off of the drawing and only where there's no pencil. Okay, step five, shadows. I come in and I do 
all I touch up all of the shadows all over the whole house at the same time so that I have the same level of darkness I'm running the shadows all in the same direction and I'm catching shadows that I've missed before so that's important to do in step five Step six, my final phase, I'm re-emphasizing some of those really important lines, those dark edges, and I'm erasing any background smudges. And here is the finished drawing. I really just had so much fun immersing myself in the details, and I really just put the outside world in do not disturb mode. I did get stressed out a few times working on this. I wasn't entirely sure how I was gonna tackle this walkway. And man, railings are a little nerve wracking. Uh, once you draw that line, it's really hard to undo it. But with each challenge, I celebrated my success and did a little studio happy dance, which I do a lot around here. And I'm just totally thrilled with my finished product. Okay, it is time for my professional art tip on how to prevent smudging when you're working with a pencil drawing. You may have seen me in the video using this piece of paper. And I don't know if you noticed, but it is see-through. It also has a slick, shiny surface and is a little bit like wax paper, except it's thinner, much slicker, and doesn't have that waxy residue. Nothing sticks to it that I have found so far. It's the perfect um, cover to put over your drawing. You know, when you're working on a piece and you're saturating an area with a lot of color pencil or graphite, it is super easy to accidentally put your hand on that paper and just smear. And a time or two, I have discovered um, you can't really come back from that, depending on how badly you do it. Either way, you don't wanna give yourself that extra work. So if you don't have glassine paper, um, in the meantime, use a clean piece of drawing paper or copy paper. Um, but when you have a chance, check out glassine paper. I have it in a pack of 25 sheets this size. I also have it in a roll, which I use for packaging my paintings for shipping. So check your local art store, search for it online. Um, you'll be happy that you did. My hope is that each of you who has a desire to create something artsy is to just start and enjoy it and celebrate the challenges and the successes. Our desire to create is a basic human instinct and the best time to start is now. Thanks so much for joining me today. I love questions. Please leave your questions in the comments below or contact me on my website at artworkbysonya.com. If you like this video, please hit the like button and be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you catch all of my future content and creative art inspirations. Until next time, see you art lovers.